Today, let's take time to share the Word of God together with a sermon titled, The Trumpet Sound of Prophecy. In the Bible, God gives prophecies concerning this age, our church, and how our gospel will lead us to the everlasting kingdom of heaven. While studying the prophecies in the Bible, we can find God's amazing predestined will to show us all the steps we need to take. Isn't that why Father said, the army moves at the trumpet sound, and the saints of faith must move at the sound of prophecy. We come to think, what prophecy is being fulfilled? What are the things that we must do in this age? In the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and various climate disasters, is it our job to be silent? Or isn't it to find the way to break through this situation? What is the Bible telling us to do in this age? And what mission has been given to us? We ought to look at these matters carefully so that we can learn and put into practice all the decrees and laws that we must keep, including all the characteristics we must have as heavenly people who will go to eternal heaven. Then, let us look at Mark chapter 16 to see what prophecy God left for those who are living in the age of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. God is leading all mankind to the way of salvation with a different name in each age. The age of the Father, the age of the Son, and the age of the Holy Spirit. According to the teachings of the Bible, we have learned and confirmed that we are saved in the name of Christ An Sang Hong, Jesus' new name in this last age of the Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. The Bible prophesies that punishment is waiting for those who do not believe in the new name. How far will the gospel, which we believe in the age of the Holy Spirit, be preached? Will it stop after being preached to certain nations? Or will it be preached until the end? Let us also see the trumpet sound of prophecy written in Romans chapter 10. Verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. It is not that they could not believe because the Word of God was not preached. God's words have already been preached all over. Therefore, our gospel is not prophesied to stop after reaching a certain region. Then, how far will it reach? The Bible says, their words have gone out to the ends of the world meaning there will be no place in the world where the gospel will not be preached. God has already made the words go out to the ends of the earth. Our gospel mission is prophesied to be preached to the ends of the world. 
Then, what must happen to the gospel according to these words of prophecy? It must surely be preached. Today, due to COVID-19, we cannot freely meet our neighbors and even our relatives or family members because of their fear. This is the situation we are facing in this age. COVID-19 is separating people. Since many places have been shut down, there are still countries where people are not allowed to come out of their houses. Since Korea is one of the nations that play a leading role in preventive measures against the infectious disease, people can freely go to places. But there are still many countries where people are not able to. However, nowhere in the Bible does God say, the gospel won't be preached because of COVID-19. How should the gospel work be carried out even in this situation? It should keep going to save all people of the world. Then, what is the gospel that goes out into all the earth, to the ends of the world? Who is prophesied to be entrusted with the mission to preach the gospel? Let us see Matthew chapter 28. Chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Our gospel was commanded by God, who has all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, we should not focus on the physical circumstances only, but on the prophecies in this age, deeply engraving them on our hearts. In verse 19, it is written, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We need to study to whom this prophecy is given as a command. Was this for the saints of the early church? Or the saints of the Old Testament? No. This age of the Holy Spirit is the only age when baptism can be conducted in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What did God ask the people in the age of the Holy Spirit to do? God said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Aren't there many regulations, decrees, and laws that we must keep? What will God do when we go and teach everything God commanded? God promised, I will surely be with you always to the very end of the age. We need to have faith that everything will surely be fulfilled if we follow the prophecy, believing the promise of God. How much can we trust the prophecies written in the Bible? Let us move to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain. And you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. You will do well means that it is the right thing to do, doesn't it? It says, we have the words of the prophets made more certain. The Bible teaches us that the word of prophecy will be fulfilled completely. Let us see Matthew chapter 26, verse 51. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my Father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? 
어떻게 이루어지리요 하시더라 하고 했습니다. Even though all the other disciples fled in fear, Peter tried to intervene and protect Jesus to keep them from arresting him, even cutting off the ear of a high priest servant named Malchus with a sword. Jesus stopped him. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think I cannot call on my father? and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? Do you think I cannot stop this situation where they are trying to take me? Do you think I don't have that kind of power? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? Who then will be the sacrificial lamb for a sin offering and fulfill the prophecy of the Passover lamb? I have come to this earth to save mankind. Didn't the Bible prophesy that I must take up their sins and become the sin offering in order to save them? They didn't try to capture me for the past three years, but why do you think they suddenly attack me now? Jesus thought highly of Peter's faith and strong desire to protect him. But he let him know that they had to capture him, not because they wanted to, but because they were playing a role in the prophecy that said it must happen in this way. Therefore, he said, stop swinging your sword around, but put it back in its place. And in verse 55, he said like this, At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be, what? Might be fulfilled. What are the writings of the prophets? But this has all taken place that the prophecies written in the Bible might be fulfilled. You have had so many chances to capture me. However, you did not arrest me. You are arresting me now because the prophesied time has come. You have come to capture me because of the prophecy that I am the sacrificial sin offering, haven't you? Jesus just followed them silently. Couldn't he have overpowered them and stopped them from tying him up? However, Jesus said, wasn't it already prophesied that they would act like this? And that I will be in this kind of situation according to the scriptures and the writings of the prophets? Jesus let us know that no one can avoid prophecies. Then, we need to reflect on the prophecies about our age. Earlier, we saw the prophecies given to us in Matthew chapter 28 and Mark chapter 16. God has come to this earth to save mankind, and this good news of the gospel will be preached to the whole world, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God emphasized this will surely be done. This will surely be done. However, now we are not allowed to meet people in person due to the coronavirus pandemic. Fortunately, online preaching is permitted. We always thought preaching could only be done by meeting people in person. However, God allowed us to preach to people online even while they are in their homes. It is not face-to-face -face preaching. We can say that God has opened the way for individual preaching online to save the whole world. As a result, we preach practice and preach the gospel virtually. Moreover, this pandemic has given more opportunities for brothers and sisters to contact their relatives friends and acquaintances by saying, how are you doing during the pandemic? 
I called you to see how you've been doing. God gives us a very precious promise that He will make disasters pass over us through the Passover. Would you like to hear more about it? Our gospel is destined to go out into Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Therefore, is there a greater joy than participating in the completion of the gospel work? Let us look at Daniel chapter 12. Verse 1. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. What kind of blessing will be given to those who lead many to righteousness? God will give them glory to shine like the stars forever and ever. If God gives us the prophetic mission in this age, it will surely be fulfilled even if someone blocks our way or hinders the gospel from being preached. Whether it is accepted or not, it is up to the individual. However, the gospel news that we are preaching is prophesied to be delivered to all nations and be known to all peoples. Then, shouldn't we all receive God's abundant blessings by leading many people to righteousness, just as God prophesied in Daniel chapter 12? God has shown this prophecy clearly, but if we do not believe it, we can never participate in the gospel. Let us also see the prophecy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of His appearing and His kingdom, I give you this charge. What charge did He give us? Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. To whom did God give these words? Of course, these were given to the saints of the early church at Jesus' first coming. But the prophecy written in Matthew chapter 28 and Mark chapter 16 go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation is given to those living in the age of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in the age of the Holy Spirit, God has made science develop rapidly in a short period of time. The world that had been quiet for thousands of years, even billions of years, brought about an explosive revolution. Amazing things are taking place in the fields of science, knowledge, and culture, which cannot be compared with any other generations. God has allowed groundbreaking abilities to those in the age of the Holy Spirit. The ability to invent the computer happened in this age. People before us could not even imagine this. We also invented convenient things like airplanes. In the old days, the only way to go faster was to ride a horse or a carriage. However, now we have airplanes that are incomparably faster than horses and carriages. God has made it easier for us to travel around the world in just a few days. What I would like to say is that we should move at the trumpet sound of prophecy of God telling us to go forward. 
But since some cannot endure temporarily, they fall behind. God promised that he who stands firm and believes to the end will be saved. And he is showing his promise through the prophecies of the Bible. However, what if we do not believe it, but fall on the way to heaven, or become wary, or give up, or go the other way? If we do that, we will never be able to enter the everlasting kingdom of heaven. In our age, God has not only given us the grace of salvation, but also opened the way for us to participate in the joyful work of saving others. As COVID-19 became rampant, there are many countries where church meetings have been restricted for about seven months now. They say the restriction is loosening up little by little. However, there are also countries like India or Central and South America where it is getting worse. It seems that there are still many countries where people are not free. Despite that, gospel workers are still being raised up and the gospel is being preached continuously as we believe in the prophecy. God's words will be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We preached the gospel face to face before, but now we are preaching to all our acquaintances online or through a video chat. Now, I am hearing that many fruits are being born this way. Let us see one more prophecy in Revelation chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 10. Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Here, we can see that whether there is COVID-19 or not, those who do wrong continue to do wrong, and those who do right continue to do right, and those who preach hard continue to preach hard. Whether there are some obstacles in front of them or not, they do not use those obstacles as excuses. They cannot be excuses. It is because prophecy has power to overcome anything, even excuses. Although the Israelites came out of Egypt, they were influenced by the daily circumstances in this or that way, since they did not have a goal to enter the land of Canaan. When they didn't have food, they staggered. And when they didn't have water, they also wavered. God doesn't give us meat. In Egypt, we sat around pots of meat and drank all the broth to the full. Their faith staggered whenever they heard these complaining words. However, those whose goal was to enter Canaan didn't waver. They only walked diligently toward the direction of the prophecy God had shown, believing in His promise. However, those who didn't have a goal and direction always staggered. Let us continue with Revelation chapter 22, verse 11. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will do what? I will give to everyone according to what he has done. God said that he would bless us according to what we have done. What should I do? I can't do anything because of the pandemic. However, there are brothers and sisters who work even harder despite the pandemic. These results come from different thoughts. I believe I told you this story before. Nike sent two salesmen to Africa to investigate if they could sell shoes to the natives. The two people gave reports. One of them said, we will suffer a great loss if we try to sell our shoes in Africa. 
Because most people walk barefoot there. We will go out of business there. However, the other person gave a different report. Africa is a vast, endless market. He said, it is because they don't wear shoes. But once they know how comfortable it is to walk with shoes on, they will want to have shoes. His thought was different than the other person's. Which person's report did Nike go for? They went with the one who said Africa had great potential in selling shoes. At first, Nike handed out sneakers for free for Africans to try. The people tried them on since they were free. They realized that walking in shoes was a lot more comfortable than walking barefoot. After their shoes were worn out, they no longer felt comfortable walking barefoot. Since they understood the importance of wearing shoes little by little, they began buying shoes. This way, Nike was able to sell many pairs of shoes in Africa. Brothers and sisters, if we hesitate or stop doing the gospel because of the obstacle called coronavirus, we cannot receive God's help through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The army moves according to the trumpet sound, but we, the saints of faith, must move according to the sound of prophecy. The trumpet sound of prophecy is asking us to arise and shine. Therefore, we must not stay silent even after hearing the trumpet sound of prophecy. Of course, we need to be silent when God tells us to be silent. However, when God tells us to arise and shine, we must move according to God's signal. See how Gideon's warriors won victory. When they were told to hide the torches in the jars, they were silent while hiding the torches. However, when they were told to break the jars and hold out the torches, didn't they all move together according to that command? Instead of doing nothing, using coronavirus as an excuse, let us understand the will of God through this prophecy that is being fulfilled. Hasn't God allowed us to have many conveniences? God has given us the computer and the cell phone. We have ways to preach to people even if we cannot meet face to face. Therefore, let us move according to the trumpet sound of prophecy. It is prophesied that we should preach to all nations and that this gospel will be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It is prophesied that this gospel which we are preaching will go out into the whole earth. This shows God has opened wide the door of the gospel to be fulfilled all over the world. Hoping that you have faith in the prophecies and work hard to lead many souls to righteousness, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.